I did a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Blazing Emerald using only the new Pokemon and new forms added in this incredible ROM hack. In addition to amazingly done fake mon, this hack also has a hard mode, which gives the trainers much better AI, a level cap for each gym leader, prevents healing in battle, and forces you into set mode. Add on the one Pokemon per route rule and we've got ourselves a hardcore Nuzlocke. We start our adventure like any other in Hoenn, but this time Birch has a smorgasbord of Pokemon in his tiny little bag, including some of the new forms we are looking to use in this playthrough. We can choose from Solosis, who is now Psychic. Like grass, Tynamo, now ground in addition to electric, Oniard, who drops dark for fairy, and Dreepy, who burns away ghosts for a new dragon fire typing. For now, we are starting with Solosis, but don't worry, we'll get to see these other Hoenian forms in action soon enough. After defeating the terrifying Zigzagoon for Birch, he takes me back to his lab and rewards me with the borrowed Solosis, who I dub Caduceus. Caduceus and I take a trek north to meet up with Mei, who challenges us to our first rival battle. She sends out her Eevee to oppose Caduceus. A tail whip drops our defense, which we aren't too worried about. Cad lets off a confusion, doing a good chunk of damage, and getting the 10% confusion status infliction. Eevee breaks through the confusion for a weak tackle, and then takes another confusion to the brain. Mei isn't as lucky on the last turn as her Eevee hits himself, leaving a sliver of health that is promptly cleaned up by Cad with one last confusion, winning us our first rival battle. We move on to Petalburg Woods, where we find our first catchable teammate, a bug dark Venonat. We name her Vexalia and welcome her to the team. After wiping the floor with the Aqua Grunt bullying our Devon Goods friend, we head straight to Rustboro to take on Roxanne and her rock types. Her lead Aron goes down in one hit to a magical leaf from Cad, and then she sends out her Hoenian Marini, who is now rock and poison. Two magical leaves is all it takes to drop the crystalline cutie, which prompts Roxanne to send out her final Pokemon, Geodude, who is also taken out by Caduceus's magical leaf, giving us our first gym badge and a death easy fight. After saving Pico from Team Aqua and returning her to Mr. Briny, we are challenged again by Mei on our way back through Petalburg Woods. This time, she leads with her new Pikachu to face off with Cad. She lets off an Iron Tail, dealing a small chunk of damage. Cad fires back with a massive confusion. We rinse and repeat, and Pikachu goes down. Next out is our old friend Eevee, who I notice is now a girl. We love a trans queen. She goes for a quick attack before almost going down to a critical hit confusion. I can't stay in with Cat at this health, so I swap out to Vexalia on another quick attack. One more quick attack hits before Vex takes out Eevee with a feint attack, winning us our second rival battle. We take Briny up on the offer for a boat ride to Dufruit Town, where we catch our next friend, a water electric tentacle. We call him FCG and head to the Granite Cave to pick up another teammate in a normal electric Dunsparce. This grandpa gets the name Chetney and added to the team. We drop off the letter to Steven and let him get back to his sitting alone in a cave as we head south of Duford to a new area called Dushine Beach. Here we find the new dark type gym leader Blake who is being accosted by two magma grunts. He asks for our help in a double battle and we happily oblige. Blake leads with his Murkrow and I with Cad as we face off against a Poochiena and a Zubat. Not wanting to deal with flying or dark type moves, we swap to FCG while Blake takes out Zubat with a massive wing attack. Out comes a new Teddy Ursa who is now normal with fire. FCG Aqua Jets the bear and Murkrow murks Poochiena with another wing attack, this time critting. Nummel comes out and I promptly Aqua Jet it into oblivion and let Blake finish off the Teddy Ursa for the win. After we deal with them, Blake returns to his gym leader duties, and I follow quickly on his heels to challenge him. His monster Murkrow is out first, but unlike the Magma Grunts, we have a Chetney. Murkrow goes for a useless taunt as we spark the ever-loving shit out of it for the kill. Out comes Sneasel, who obviously outspeeds us for a pursuit, as we hit with another spark for half damage. Not wanting to take a switch boosted pursuit, Chet tanks one more hit before finishing off Sneasel with one more spark. Blake sends out his final Pokemon in Houndor. Chet eats his Heldor and Berry, however I still swap to FCG on a glare that leaves him paralyzed. But our faithful boy breaks through to secure the kill with Aqua Jet, winning us our second gym badge, still deathless. Then, Briny sails us over to Slaveport City, where we head north to find our next encounter. A normal Farfetch'd. Don't worry, Beauregard won't stay normal for long. We also evolved Cat into a parry cute Duosian, and Vex into the new bug fairy Pokemon, Lusamoth, who learns Moonraiser, an 85 power, 100% accuracy special fairy move that has a chance to put the target to sleep. Good God. Next to the evolution party is FCG, who is now a Tentacruel with his own disgusting move in an 80 power priority electric move called Thunderclap. The animation also makes me giggle. And lastly, new Evo Regard evolves into Malarkey, a new fighting flying type. Our team is looking snazzy in their new digs as we head over to the museum to help Captain Stern with his Team Aqua problem. FCG claps the first Grunt's cheeks with a single thunderclap and goes back in for more against the next Grunt Zubat. The final mon in this encounter is a new Hoenian Seal, who is now a dark type in addition to its usual water type. The clapper finishes her off too, the little fiend. Archie shows up, says some weird shit, and then runs off. I follow in kind and run off to Route 110 for our third rival battle with Mei. She once again leads with Pikachu, and I send out the faithful clap giver. He takes a break from clapping though, opting instead for a strong poison jab, taking the electric rodent down in one shot. 
The same is true for her next Pokemon Clefairy, leaving Mei with just her Eevee, who is apparently gender fluid. A fake out delays the inevitable, as all will eventually succumb to the clap. You cannot run away, you cannot hide. All cheeks will be clapped by his shocking tentacles. It is only a matter of time before it is your turn. Prepare your cheeks, dear viewer. He's coming. After absolutely dumpstering this stupid kid in front of his stupid uncle, we make a pit stop at the daycare to drop off a Weedle that we caught earlier to Shine Beach to breed a new one at a lower level. This is so that we can max out his friendship before level eight to get the new evolution of Kakuna, Drilladin, who is a bug poison monster with a base 130 in attack and defense. First of all, the Drilladin makes a great addition to the party. After getting Percy to the level cap, we take him and the rest of the squad to face off against the third gym leader, Watson. He leads with his very own Chetney, and I start off with Caduceus. A body slam from Dunsparce unfortunately leaves Cad paralyzed, however, a held Cherry Berry takes care of that quickly, leaving Cad open to take half of his health with a side beam. Another body slam doesn't paralyze, but does leave Cad in the red before finishing off the silly snake with another side beam. Next up for Watson is Luxio. I swap my low-hanging fruit out for the Clap Master, but this dumb cat decides to try to clap the clapper. Do you know how dumb you look right now, Luxio? I have Levin skin, you dumb bitch. It raises his attack. Recognize the alpha here, Luxio. You don't even deserve to be clapped by his clappingness. You get a poison jab to the cheeks. Make sure you don't forget this moment on your way to hell, idiot. <coughs> uh... Anyway, SCG cleans up Watson's Electro despite being paralyzed in the process, but nearly goes down to a massive shockwave. To avoid losing him to an unfortunate paralysis proc, I swap into Percival to finish off Magnezone, but not before they paralyze themselves with the new 160 base power move, Overcharge. Percival doesn't have much to deal damage to Magnezone, so I choose to hope that Pin Missile hits enough times to kill so that we don't lose our new baby boy. And with two lucky crits and four hits total, we take down Watson for our third gym badge, still deathless. Next, we're off to get some fire encounters. No, like, literally, almost all of them are fire types. First, it's off to Route 112 to catch our very own sun bear Teddy Ursa named Fern, who we quickly evolve into Ursaring. Then we head over to a new area right outside of Verdant Turf Tunnel called the Burning Grotto for the 2% encounter of the Fire Dragon Dreepy. Jester took quite a while to find, but we are glad to have her on the team. She can also evolve immediately into Dracloak. On Route 113, we catch a Steel Fire Skarmory named Yasha, and on 114, we catch a Seviper named Simon, who, after grinding through Thief procs on a 5% held item needed, evolves into the new Poison Steel type Silviper. We then finally head north of Fall Arbor to a new area, the Fall Arbor Mines. There, we find out what Brawly's been up to, teaching the young children who yearn for the mines their craft. I break free of my new calling long enough to pick up the electric ground dynamo, who we name Ashton, and get out before Brawly entices me back to my new passion job. I have an adventure to finish, Brawly. The mines will be here for me when I get back. Capping off the slew of catches and evolutions is Caduceus, who evolves into a Reuniclus with a kinky side. We head to Meteor Falls to break up the powwow between Team Magma and Team Aqua and follow them to the top of Mount Chimney to take on Team Magma's leader, Maxi. He leads with his own Ursa Ring, and I send out the Clapper to do some business. Two Aqua Jets take out Shadow Fern and give way for Maxi's Typhlosion. Another two Aqua Jets and some recoil from Double Edge are enough to bring down the volcano on the volcano. Lastly, Maxi sends out poor old Camera up to go down to a single Aqua Jet, meaning that FCG took out Maxi single handedly. The ocean wins today, landlubber. On the way to Lava Ridge, we pick up another fire type in the Grass Fire Hoenian Maractus. We call him Caleb and move on to take on the Lava Ridge Gym. Flannery comes out hot with Larvesta, who I was prepared for and made sure I started with Bow to Oko it with Drill Peck. Rapidash is next, who outspeeds us for a bounce that does massive damage and paralyzes our poor duck. Still, she breaks through the paralysis to connect with a critical hit Drill Peck for another one hit KO. Skarmory comes out next, and Bow takes her lead for Fern to come out, who has met with a critical hit Flare Bullet second brings her too low to keep in. Instead, we go to Bo's beloved Yasha, who eats the incoming Flare Blitz with a Flash Fire, sending her into a rage that powers up her Blaze Kick. Flannery Skarmory has Magma Armor instead of Flash Fire, which leaves Yasha free to kick him until he goes down while tanking attempted overheats. Camera Up comes out now, but has nothing to deal with Yasha's fiery rampage, save a few weak body slams. Camera Up follows in Skarmory's footsteps by going down to Yasha's footsteps, winning us our fourth gym badge, still deathless. May meets us outside the gym and gives us the Go Goggles, allowing us to traverse the desert on Route 111, which I'm counting as a new route for an encounter. If you don't do that, you're weird. And search for a 2% Hoenian Pinsir, a ground bug type, who we eventually find, catch, and dub Grog. We also take the time to evolve Ashton into Hoenian Electric and Chetney into the brand new Dragon Electric Drasbarath. We head back to Petalburg to take on Daddy Norman and his normal types. His normally scary normal type team doesn't stand much of a chance against Bo. She sets up a swords dance and then one shots every single Mon on his team. 
easily earning us our fifth gym badge, very deathless. With our newly acquired Surf, we head over to Route 118 and pick up a regular Doe Duo, who we name Vaxel Dan. To be able to evolve him, we need to head back to the desert to pick up a Cubone to evolve into a Marowak, to have in the party when we level Vax up. Now, we can evolve him into the new and improved Flying Ground Dodrio. We also pick up a Fairy-type Gumi, who at first glance doesn't look too different. However, when Terrian evolves with High Friendship, we get the very different Gulossal, a high HP, high special attack, and special defense behemoth. It's time for the Weather Institute and our fight with Admin Shelly. She starts with the Hoenian Dugong, who as a reminder is Water Dark, and I send out Bo. A Sky Uppercut just barely doesn't get the KO, and Bo tanks a hefty Ice Punch because of it. Another Uppercut finishes the job, but Bo is still in dire straits. As Gorbis comes out, we swap to Caduceus on an unfortunately timed Ice Beam, leaving Cad worse off than Bo. I can't risk staying in, so FCG comes in to tank the next Ice Beam and one-shot the fish with a clap, winning us the battle. Just across the bridge from the Weather Institute is our next rival battle with May. Her newly evolved Raichu is up first, and Bo comes out not expecting to be countered immediately. I swap her out for FCG to get 11 skin boost, but the damage from his thunder is way more than I expected, almost one-shotting our beloved Clapper. I swap him out for Terrian to soak up the damage with his insane special defense. The rain boosted surf on the switch and the thunder after only leaves Terry on half health, where he then fires off a moon razor for half damage. Another thunder puts Terry in the red, and another moon razor finishes off the annoying rat. Out comes Clefable, who we swapped a cat to deal with. I have no idea why the AI goes for two moonlights in a row, but Cad isn't complaining as he gets a free swap and a free sidebeam. Clefable uses Dazzle Dust, which always does half the enemy's remaining health. Cad does a good chunk of damage with Magical Leap before we swap out to Percy to finish the job. This turns out to be the wrong play, as Clefable heals almost to full with a moonlight. She heals the rest with another, but Percy does what I should have done in the first place and one-shots him with a poison jab. Lastly is our gender fluid friend, who has now evolved into an Espeon. I decide to take the risk of the outspeed and stay in with Percy, since everyone else is kind of low due to my own stupidity. She does outspeed with the psychic. That Percy survives with 6 HP to secure the win with a super effective Megahorn. We pass up Fortree for a moment to head to Route 120 to pick up a new Hoenian form of Shuckle, who is now a rock and grass type. Not won't see much use, but we're happy to have her along for the ride. We now head back to Fortree to challenge Winona and her high flyers. She leads with her Pelipper and I counter with SCG. A single clap takes down the dumb bird and Tropius comes out to take its place. No reason to stay in with FCG, so we swap out to Jester on a Miss Grass Whistle. I realize too late that my only attacking fire move is Fire Spin, so I let one of those off for the ticking damage as Tropius misses another whistle. I try Dragon Pulse for more damage, but Tropius heals it back with Synthesis. This repeats a few times as a chip from Fire Spin helps keep us ahead. Finally, Tropius tries a Brave Bird, leaving us in a position to finally finish it off with a Dragon Pulse. Out comes Aerodactyl, which prompts me to swap to FCG again. A 90 power stone surge does a good chunk of damage and we shoot back with an Aqua Jet for over half. A surprise earthquake nearly takes out FCG, leaving him on only 2 HP before his Citrus Berry pops. That was close. A final Aqua Jet finishes the job and Aerodactyl goes down. Winona sends out her own Beauregard, and that quickly goes down to the Clapmaster. Her final Pokemon is a Hoenian Dodrio, akin to our own Vaxel Dan. Not wanting to tempt fate again with FCG, I swap out to Bo on a Bone Rush for free. I go for a risky Drill Peck that does a good chunk, but leaves Bo open to a super effective Brave Bird. That she lives on 1 HP thanks to her ability Resolute to take the battle with a final Drill Peck, winning us a very close and very scary battle, somehow deathless. With the new level cap, we can finally evolve Jester into Hoenian Dragapult and teach her Dragon Darts, the fire version of the Lion's signature move. We also can go to the Desert Underpass, which is the place that Ashton needs to be to evolve into Hoenian Electros. We head to Lily Cove City, but not before finding a random trainer with a random shiny Sviper. In Lily Cove, I stumble across two totally straight male friends on opposing teams chilling in a cave alone together, talking about how cool they are. In exchange for not adding their star-crossed love, they offer me, a child, black market deals on some rare items. After that fun little detour, we head to Route 123 on our way to Mount Pyre to stop and finally pick up this Steel Fairy Cutie, Hoenian Ponyard. Orem joins the team as we head up to the top of Mount Pyre to stop whatever it is that's going on there and get the magma emblem from the old lady on top of the mountain. I don't know, I didn't want to stop paying attention. On our way out, we stop in the grass to pick up the new ghost flying Emolga that we name Molly Mock. Finally, I realize that we can go ahead and evolve Orem into the badass Hoenian Bisharp. 
just look how cool he is. I love him. Wanting to check out the department store, I talk to Mei and take on her challenge for our last rival battle. She leads with a new Crawdon, and I send out the Clapmaster. Thunderclap takes out Crawdon, no problem. Tropius comes out next, and I swap to Jester on a Grass Whistle that actually hits, putting our devil to sleep. Confident that she can tank a hit or two, I spam through the full five turns of sleep as Jester tanks two flies. A devil darts that crits on the second hit is enough to take out the Banana Dino. Clefable is up next for Mei, and I swap out to Orem for his debut. An Iron Head does some massive damage, but that damage is healed back up with a wish. Another Iron Head is just barely not enough to take him out, but gets the flinch, allowing for a third and final Iron Head to finish off Clefable. Raichu comes out and sets up a scary Tail Glow, which leaves me in a position to have to make decisions and take risks. I decide to stay in for a turn, and Orem just barely lives in Electro Burst, which is a 90 power move with a 40% chance to lower accuracy. Orem's Iron Head comes out and does a considerable amount, but now I am faced with a conundrum. Do I swap out and try to tank a massive hit with another team member? If I don't, Orem will certainly perish in his first ever battle. But if not him, it will most likely just be somebody else. I decide that I just can't bear the thought of losing our new friend this early, and I swap out to our trusty starter to try to soak this massive electric stab- oh, wait, he went for surf. Huh, okay. Well, that puts Cat in a position to tank a not very effective Electro Burst and finish off the Glowing Tailed Rat with an Energy Ball. All that's left for us to do now is deal with our old friend Espeon, who answers the switch to SCG with his Shadow Ball. I go for a Liquidation to try to deal as much damage as possible, since whatever Espeon has won't be too much damage for Sir Clappington. A Psycho Boost comes out- wait, Psycho Boost? No! In a very ironic fashion, our first death in this run is arguably our most beloved Pokemon. I didn't stop to think what Espeon could have because I had so much faith in FCG. My hubris got the best of me, and the faithful clap giver paid the price. I'm sorry, FCG. You will always be remembered. Bo comes out for the revenge kill with a drill peck and wins us the battle. A hollow victory for sure. But as unfortunate as this loss is, we still have a job to do, and FCG would want us to keep on with our smiley day. We make our way to the Magma Hideout and work our way through to Magma Advent Tabitha. Ashton is ready to make his debut, and uh, okay, a flinch delays Ashton a turn, but no worries, this magnitude will take out Houndoom and want- Damn it, come on, man! I swap Ashton out for Jester, fearing a critical hit, and it turns out, rightfully so. I do take a risk of another crit to send a Dragon Pulse to Houndoom, bringing him into the yellow. We luckily aren't punished and live the next Dark Pulse easily, finishing off Houndoom with another Dragon Pulse. Dugtrio comes out, and I swap to Bow on a Night Slash that does next to nothing. A Leaf Blade takes out Dugtrio in one shot, putting an Electros of Tabitha's own up next. I decide to go for the kill with another super effective Leaf Blade, but it comes up just short, leaving Bo to fall to a massive overcharge for our second death. When it rains, it pours in my Nuzlocks. I saw red and I didn't stop to consider what could happen, and I was punished dearly. I send out Percy to finish the job on the now paralyzed deal, leaving Tabitha with her final Pokemon, Magmortar. If only I had a Tentacruel to deal with him. I go for a U-turn for some damage on the switch. To oh, right. Drill it in is slow. Oops. Look, I never said I was good at Pokemon. Percy somehow lives on 2 HP and is able to swap out to Ash, who outspeeds on an overcharge of our own, avenging Bo in the same way she was taken out, and winning us the battle. We head further down to try to stop Maxi from waking Groudon from its nap, which he does anyway, and gets upset that Groudon runs away after. I would too if you were pestering me to wake up and do your bidding. Anyways, Maxi gets pissed off enough to attack a child, but Ashton makes up for his lackluster debut by magnituding the shit out of every one of Maxi's Pokemon. I head back to Lily Cove into the Aqua Hideout to chase Archie, and I am accosted by his admin, Matt. Everything goes so well with the first few Pokemon that I decide to give Molly a shot at taking out his final Pokemon Blastoise. You got this little buddy. Oh, he knows Ice Punch. Oopsies. Much like his namesake, Molly Mock goes down before we get a chance to learn much about him. Percival finishes off Blastoise, and we move quickly on this train of death and despair that I seem to be on. On to Maz Deep City and the double battle against Tate and Liza. Hypno and Grumpig are out first against Vex and Orem. Vex's signal beam almost takes out Grumpig, and Orem finishes off the job with an Iron Head. Solrock and the Sun come out, and Hypno sends a weak psychic towards Vex. Another signal beam from Vex takes Hypno to half, and unfortunately, Solrock outspeeds Orem for a successful fire blast on Vex, taking her out instantly. Our first catch goes down in a blaze of glory. The latter half of my Nuzlocke's always seem to be this way, and it never gets easier. 
Bidding farewell to Vex, we send out Yasha, and Orem only takes out half of Solrog's health with an Iron Head. A Calm Mind from Hypno is a bit scary, but shouldn't be an issue. A Calm Mind from Solrock is also scary, and may be an issue. Orem takes out Hypno, and Lunatone comes in and tanks the Blaze Cake Mint to secure the Hypno kill. I swap Yasha out for Cat, praying that another Fire Blast isn't coming. Luckily, an AP and a Raging Waves water move take less than half of Cat's health. Orem finishes off Solrock with an Iron Head, and out comes Alakazam. Alakazam sets up a future site, and Lunatone lets off another weak Raging Waves at Orem. Orem just barely doesn't kill Lunatone, while Cad takes the time to heal up with Recover, and Lunatone pops a Citrus Berry. Alakazam sets up a pretty scary Calm Mind, and Orem cleans up yet another kill, giving way to Cad's clone. An Energy Ball does less than we hoped for due to the Calm Mind boost to Special Defense. I swap Jester out for Cad, and Alakazam fires a super strong Shadow Ball towards Orem that leaves him in the red. Orem the Janitor cleans up yet another kill on Alakazam, but is on his last leg as Renuclus takes their turn and sets up a calm mind. Whew, that was close. One more hit and Orem would have been dead. Future Sight strikes again. Although gone almost as soon as he came, Orm had an undeniable impact on our run, especially in this fight. Like a true soldier, he went down fighting to his last breath. Thanks, Orem. You will be missed. Jester and Percy finished the battle, winning us a seventh gym badge, but not without a paid price. With access to the water areas around us, we can pick up a dugong named Imogen before teaming up with Steven to take on Maxi and Courtney at the Space Center. Imogen makes her debut along with Steven's Metagross, who takes out the enemy's Ursa Ring with a massive Psycho Cut. Imogen follows in kind, taking out the Typhlosion that follows before they even get the chance to act. Donphan hits Imogen with a surprise super effective Mega Horn, prompting me to switch to Ashton to take the second. Camerupt lets off a full health eruption, putting Ashton at half before a held Citrus Berry recovers some HP. A Meteor Mash takes out Donphan in one shot giving way for Arcanine as Ash lets off a small magnitude 6. Unfortunately, it seems Camerupt took offense to this, and shows Ashton how it's done with a full earthquake, getting revenge on Ashton for the last time they met. Sorry buddy, thanks for the help. Metagross and Arcanine go down as well, leaving Camerupt alone for a moment to ponder their massacre. I send out Jester, Steven sends out Skarmory, and Courtney sends out Charizard. Skarmory finishes off Camerupt with a Brave Bird, and Charizard goes down to a Dragon Pulse and another Brave Bird winning us a tough, costly battle. We take a detour to the Shoal Cave to pick up a static encounter of the Crystal Onyx, a rock ice type. We call her Pike, a much needed light to the team after all the losses. Pike evolves immediately into the amazing new Crystalix, a specially defensive Titan. We also find a water ghost type Hoenian Chinchow named Laudna in the underwater grass. After hunting for a Dusk Stone, we evolve her into Lantern. We also pick up a Hoenian Quillfish, a water steel type. Although Veth won't see any battle, we appreciate her moral support from the box. In a deja vu moment, we are attacked by Archie as we try to stop him from waking Kyogre. He leads with Mighty Inna, and unfortunately, I start with Cat. I swiftly swap to Percy on a weak poison thing. Mightyena switches to Frostbite, which is a stronger ice fang that does a little bit more damage. Percy takes a turn to hone in his move and then finally connects with the Megahorn for the Yoko. Sharpedo comes out and takes a massive crunch out of Percy before going down to another Megahorn. Dugong is out next and my only option is to swap out Percy since he's so low, but unfortunately this seems to have been foreseen as Dugong pursues Percy as he's being recalled into his ball, killing him moments from safety. You did good, Percival. Rest easy, friend. I follow the backstabbing with Tarion, who tanks an ice punch and almost takes out Dugong in one shot with Moonraiser. We repeat the process and she goes down. Last out for Archie is Feraligator, who comes at us with a massive frostbite that gets the 10% freeze chance on Terry. We are forced to swap out to Imogen, who takes the next few hits like a boss as she whittles down her opponent with knockoffs. Not wanting to risk her life, I swap out to Jester on an earthquake for no damage due to levitate. Our jet plane demon outspeeds for a final dragon pulse, securing the victory in yet another expensive battle. Battle. Maxi and Archie argue over who is the most wrong. We do exactly what they did in Wake an Ancient Power, but this time, we're right. And oh look, we found a shiny tentacle. Shiny claws is shiny claws, folks. Arceus said that we aren't finishing this run without a Clapmaster. We call him Frida, and evolve him so he's ready to take on the mantle of his predecessor. We make our way to Cetopolis so that Rayquaza can yell at his bickering children, and we can take on the final gym leader, Juan. Juan sends out my favorite little guy, Glalie. Look at him, he's just a ball. I love, oh, he's he's dead. Thanks, thanks, Jester. Mamoswine is next out, and Jester barely misses the kill with a double dart, tossing her a lot of HP and a citrus berry after a strong stone surge. Jester finishes off Mamo and Juan sends out his own Chrysalis. I swap out to Yasha on a Crystallize, which is a strong rock type move with a chance to freeze, which 
does proc on Yasha. Our Citrus Berry buys us another turn, however we are unable to break out and need to swap to Simon. Luckily Chrysalix doesn't get the freeze on the next two crystallizes, however Simon unluckily misses an Iron Tail. Another Citrus Berry keeps Simon in as he tanks another hit before finally getting an Iron Tail off. Walrein comes out next and I decide to risk another turn with Simon for another strong Iron Tail. And he lives the waterfall with 30 HP to take half of Walrein's health. We swap to Laudna to soak up a waterfall and I decide to set up a confusion. Freeze Dry almost takes out our new fish friend, so we swap out to Tarion while Walrein hurts himself in confusion. We get lucky on the next turn as well as Walrein gets confused again and we take him out with a Moonraiser. Frostlass comes out and we exchange blows of Blizzard and Moonraiser until Frostlass goes down. Last out is Weavile, who obviously outspeeds for a slash on our tanky boy. But unfortunately, slash crits, taking out Terry on the final stretch. I really thought we had this one easy, but there seems to be a cost to every single battle now. Fern comes out and gets the revenge kill with a flame wheel, securing our last gym badge. We make our way through Victory Road and find ourselves finally at the Pokemon League. We take the time to prepare our final team and land on the ragtag group of Imogen, Jester, Frida, Caduceus, Simon, and Pike to take on the final five fights. First up is Phoebe's ghost team. Her Emolga comes out first and I send out the newly minted Clapper. We put him to work quickly as one Thunderclap takes out Emolga in one shot. Next up is Gengar. Jester swaps in on a weak Giga Drain and we set up a Dragon Dance knowing that Gengar doesn't have much to hit us with. An Ice Beam does a good chunk, but not as much as these Dragon Darts do as they take Gengar down. Banette comes out and eats a hefty Dragon Pulse and tries to take us down with a Destiny Bond. I D-Dance to stall out another Destiny Bond, but she opts instead to knock off. I go for the kill, but just barely miss the KO with another Dragon Pulse. In the moment, I forgot that Devil Darts is physical, hence why I'm going for Dragon Pulses instead, even with all these D-Dance boosts. She tries again for a Destiny Bond, so I stall out another few turns with D-Dance until she gives us an opening to kill. Dust Noir comes out, and since I am dumb and still don't realize I can sweep her from here on with darts, I swap to Imogen on an Ice Punch. Two knockoffs later and we're on to Cothagrigus, who goes to half on another knockoff, before putting us to sleep with Shade Trance. Shadow Tag keeps us from switching, so I am forced to wait out to sleep while initially weak Shadow Balls get stronger and stronger and stronger, but Imogen wakes up in the nick of time on turn 4 and finishes off Cothagrigus. <laughs> But Imogen wakes up in the nick of time on turn 4 and finishes off Cofagrigas with a knockoff. Last out is a Ladna of her own. I can't stand to make these two fight, so I swap out to Frida on a strong Dark Pulse that scares me for a moment before healing up with a Citrus Berry. The clapping will have to wait since I don't want to risk another crit, so I go out to our special wall Pike to whittle Lantern down as he goes for useless Hydro Pumps thanks to the new ability Crystal Case, which makes us even weaker to fire but immune to water. Elite 4 Battle 1, done. Serena and her grass types are up next in our gauntlet. Jester and Sunflora are out first, the latter of which kindly sets up the sun for us with drought, so we can D-dance once and sweep the ever-loving fuck out of this poor team with sun-boosted devil darts. It just wasn't even close. Great job, Jester. You single-handedly secured us battle number two. Third to the party is Bede, the fairy specialist. Luckily, Simon is also a fairy specialist, being poison and steel. Wigglytuff, Azumarill, and Gulossal are no match for the onslaught of poison tails brought by our dance. This sharp comes out as the second painful reminder of this battle, so we swap out to Jester to take him down in two turns with Devil Darts. Sylveon threatens our dragon, so we swap back to Simon on a fake out. Sylveon outspeeds for a Dazzle Dust to take exactly half of our remaining HP, as we just miss out on the KO with Poison Tail. A desperate Hyper Voice takes us low, but not low enough as we finish off Sylveon. Finally, Beat sends in Togekiss. We swap to Clapbot 2.0 to finish the job with what he does best, winning us Battle 3 of 5. Last up for the Elite Four is Drake, the Dragon Master. A Dragonite is up first against Imogen. He flies, dealing a good chunk of damage that we return with an Ice Punch. On the next fly, we take the free turn to heal with Slack Off before finishing the job with another Ice Punch. Next out is Old Man Drasparath. Not wanting to fall victim to any electric moves, we swap to Pike to absolutely tank two Thunders before taking Drasparath down with an Ice Beam. Out comes Flygon threatening an Earthquake, so we swap to Jester to eat it with Levitate. A Dragon Pulse is enough to Oko and give way to Garchomp. Jester bravely stays in and outspeeds for another strong pulse for another one shot on the scary shark. Salamence is next and we outspeed again on the kill on- Oh no. Salamence barely hangs on with an absolute sliver of health, leaving Jester wide open to take a massive outrage, taking her down in one fell swoop. Our MVP unfortunately couldn't quite make it to the end. Don't worry girl, we'll close this out for you. Frida cleans up the Salamence kill with an Aqua Jet, and Drake sends out his final Mon. 
A cruel joke, if you ask me. Frida takes some huge damage from a Dragon Pulse on the rare second move in the turn, as we go for a Liquidation for max damage, which does a lot less than anticipated. Pike comes in to tank some hits, but she ends up too low for comfort, forcing me to swap out to Imogen. Imogen is unfortunately not very useful in the final fight, so she valiantly gives her life here for a safe swap to Simon, who luckily takes a Dragon Pulse instead of Devil Darts and secures the win with Poison Tail, clearing the Elite Four and setting us up for our final bout with the champion. Thanks, Jester and Imogen. This one's for you. Our final fight versus Wallace begins the same way we did, with Caduceus out first. His energy ball handles Wishcast easily after he sets up a future sight on us. Gotta keep that in mind this time. A vision of FCG visits us, and we shake off our nostalgia tears long enough to take it out with another energy ball, although it does leave us poisoned from a poison jab. Lapras enters the fray, and it's time for Cat to share the spotlight a bit and let Pike take the future sight and chip Lapras down as she heals us with water moves. A Parish Song puts us on a timer, but we are still able to get the kill with Ancient Power. Ludicolo comes out, and we tank an Energy Ball and give a good chunk of damage with Ice Beam before swapping out Pike on Parish Count 1. Simon takes a stage and takes a laughable Energy Ball and Surf before destroying Ludi with Poison Tail. Crawdont is next out, who takes half health and a poison from a Poison Tail and goes for an ill-timed D-Dance. He does outspeed us on the next turn, but misses the kill, leaving Simon free to finish him off. The last bow in this run is Milotic. Knowing that we need a safe swap, I unfortunately have to let Simon go, just before the finish line. Your sacrifice might have been the most important of all, my friend. Rest easy. Frida takes the safe place left by Simon and lets off a massive thunderclap as Milotic barely hangs on. She goes for an ill-advised toxic, leaving Frida open to do what he and his ancestors do best. Clap cheeks. Winning us the battle against Champion Wallace and the whole damn run. Blazing Emerald was a joy to play through, and there are still some new Pokemon and forms that we didn't even get to see in this run. Check it out to see what you can do with these awesome new mons. I got very attached to all my teammates, making every triumph and downfall so much more potent. Here's to you, FCG, Bo, Molly, Vex, Orem, Ash- Man, this is a lot of Pokemon, I suck. Percy, Tarion, Jester, Imogen, and Simon. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to the end, let me know in the comments what your favorite new Pokemon form was and if you like this video format. Until next time, friends, take it easy.